Bang us a mash. Minestrone. Bang us a mash. Macaroni. Give us a bash at the bang us a mash. Me mother used to make. Well, hello and welcome to the Sausage Podcast. And this week, we're going to have a look, as promised, on the internet. If you go along to the um, Homemade Sausage group on Facebook, I did promise that as soon as it arrived, I would have a play with the um, Skinless Sausage Maker, which essentially is a silicone mould into which you put your sausage meat and then you cook it in the oven. This came out of a conversation that I had with a friend of mine um, who is Mr D, the the chap who sells the thermal cookers. And we wanted to make sausages that everybody could do without any equipment. Um, and even this is a, almost a bit of superfluous equipment, but it does work. Now, that, my first impressions, it arrived yesterday, is that I like it a lot. But there are some things that I need to know about it or need to be changed in the way that I make sausages. Because it's not the same as making sausages in a skin. First of all, there are consequences of not having a skin around your sausage meat. And um, this means, for a start, that my normal bog-standard sausage recipes from a sausage making simply won't do. Uh, I found it too wet, and that was my fault, first of all. Um, and the the reason why it was too wet was that, right, I was thinking, I'll make a sausage in the way that I ordinarily make sausages. So, essentially, it, and it was a small batch. This is, whole thing is a small batch idea. The first thing was that I made my, I got 500 grams of, of uh, minced pork, freezing cold minced pork, and then I added to that about three grams of salt, around about a gram of pepper, and a couple of grams each of um, sage and thyme. And then I added about 50 grams of breadcrumbs and around about 50 mils of water. Now, what would have done for me as a skinned sausage, that would have been fine. However, the problem with that is that I then added an egg and so it was far too wet and I added a few more breadcrumbs to, to, to dry it up a bit but it was definitely too wet and so when, when they were baked in the oven because there was no skin holding it in there's a little pool of liquid in the bottom of the plastic container in the silicone container Consequently, the sausage poached. I baked it 180 degrees for about 20 minutes, but the sausage poached, it didn't bake as such. And so I finished it off, I browned it off basically in the uh, frying pan. And it was fine, it was just like a sausage, but um, obviously it, it, it had been too wet. The other thing was because Partly because I'd added more breadcrumbs than normally, and partly because it was poaching, the consistency of the outside of the sausage was essentially not the same. But then again, you don't expect it to be the same, do you, really? Um, but, you know, there it is. So, next time, not so much liquid. And then also, I'm going to experiment with the amount of breadcrumbs that I use, um, so, in other words, getting the quantities, the ratios of materials in the sausage just right. That's um, an important thing. Now, the other thing is that when you put your sausage meat into the sausage mould, when, when it cooks, it expands a bit and so it pushes out. So it doesn't come out, or it didn't come out today. Again, this is my fault like a rounded sausage it came out much more like a sausage with a wing on the outside of it where the bread where the meat had sort of come out of the top of the sausage mold and so i trimmed that but it's not necessarily a big problem but um again it just says you've got to get the quantities just right um so that 
And I'm going to try different experiments. I'm going to try rolling the sausage meat before I put it into the the mould. That that might be a big thing to do. I'm going to try uh, various different uh, things to try and get each individual sausage looking like an individual sausage, basically. That said, all of that said and done, obviously you're in control of what your meat is. So clearly your sausages are going to taste gorgeous simply by virtue of the fact that you're putting good quality materials into them and you're not overwhelming them with flavors or um, too much meat or too many spices or whatever the, the problem might be or the, whatever the ingredient might be uh, and, and that's the big thing about this these sausages the whole thing took maybe two minutes to do you know obviously you had to cook it but to make the actual mold work took around about two minutes it came in um, a plastic bag um, you know fair enough and it suggests that you um, boil it first apparently and i'm not quite sure of the english because it was mostly sort of chinese english really uh, the um, process of making these molds involves some kind of a secondary vulcanization which some people can smell and so you boil it to get rid of the smell. I've got to confess that when I put my nose in there, I couldn't smell a thing. But I am just getting over a cold, so maybe that's part of it. But it was it was completely without smell. But anyway, I did. It's always a good idea to boil it. And I put it, put it in a pan to boil it and therefore remove any odours, but also to sterilise it too. Uh, the thing about these sausages is that because it takes only a couple of minutes to do, you are able to make small batches. So you can be able to make a meal's worth of sausages very easily without all of the rigmarole of the other sausage making processes. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking the rigmarole of the sausage making processes. I love the, that, all of it. I love the whole idea of making sausages. I love the whole idea of using my stuffer and uh, <laughs> soaking my skins and all the rest of it. These, this thing is not going to take over that um, in terms of homemade sausages. But it is going to make some people um, able to make a sausage-like sausage when they never ever did before. So, for example, you don't need to add quite so much salt because... They don't have to hang in a butcher's window for three days. They're going to be perfectly um, and ravagously, ravagously, <laughs> hungrily eaten by the family that very night. So, um, you know, these, these are ideal for small batch sausage making. Now, when you say small batch sausage making, it means you can experiment and do all kinds of things that you possibly might not have been able to have done earlier on. And you could even use this as a an experimental test bed for other kinds of sausage too. So for example, if you want to make a salmon sausage, you don't necessarily want to buy a whole kilo of salmon to make salmon sausages. But you can make a perfectly acceptable salmon-based sausage using uh, this method with only a few hundred grams of salmon. So I think... The whole tray takes on about 300 grams of meat in one in one serving. So I bought two of them so I could make you know, enough sausages for all four of us in the house. Um, it'd be ideal for things like um, very hot spicy sausage that we have. For example, we make uh, from time to time nducha sausage, which actually is more like a paste than a sausage. But we can sort of chop it up and stick it on pizzas and all that kind of thing. And you make a very, very hot chilli sausage. You don't want hundreds of grams of chilli sausage, hot, hot, hot chilli sausage that um, you've got hanging around the fridge or wherever it might be. When in actual fact you only need a little bit. So for that kind of thing, this is completely ideal. Now, so far... And I've got to confess, I only used this once. 
Uh, it arrived this morning and I made some sausages this afternoon. But so far, the whole um, idea has been to bind the liquid or the sausage meat with an egg. And I'll be doing experiments to find out the best other ways of binding the sausage and the sausage meat. So um, watch this space for that, essentially. Um, because it was too wet and because it poached, I think I've already said I finished these sausages in the pan. And that brought a kind of new experience for sausage making as far as I'm concerned. And that is the fact that <clears throat> because it wasn't completely smooth, as it would be if it was in a skin, because it wasn't completely smooth, the edges of the meat that weren't completely smooth uh, browned much more deeply than other parts. So you ended up with a kind of a croquette style crispy outside. Now I'm going to do all sorts of experiments like, for example, dusting it with flour before um, they're cooked and see if that makes any difference. And if there are any other um, additive -like type things, like for example, when I'm making pork pies, I usually give it an egg wash. Now whether an egg wash might be a good idea or not, I don't have a clue, but we'll find out. All in all, my first experiences with it were as expected. Probably, that's the way, best way of putting it. I expected there to be some liquid left over from the cooking process because it's not being held in by a skin. And I expected the outside of the sausage not particularly to be um, as smooth as you would have with a skin on it. But the rest of it was perfectly, perfectly acceptable. And uh, in essence what's a sausage it's a kind of a, a pate in a skin which is exactly what this was without the skin so a good idea i think probably every sausage maker should have one so that they can do all sorts of things make some food for dinner obviously but also testing out different ideas different ways of cooking sausages different ways of um flavouring sausages without having to make a whole big batch of stuff. So, brilliant idea. The other thing about it is that it's neat. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? Well, when I've got the meat in the silicone tray that's got the sausage mould in it, um, or sus the sausage moulds, you put your meat in there, you put the lid on, you put it on a, a baking tray, pop it in the oven, and that is, that's all you need to do to it. It works perfectly fine. You don't have lots and lots of messy pans and um, things to clean up afterwards because it's very, very easy to clean. And so there's, there's an element of that being perfectly acceptable. The other thing that you can do with this is that you can um, put it on a little trivet on some water and literally just boil it in a pan, which again would work perfectly fine the other thing that you can do with it is that you can microwave it and you presumably will end up with the same sort of results as in the oven which you can then go on and um, finish the whole thing in the pan if you like to or or whatever it is that you're going to do uh, the sausages themselves hold together perfectly fine and i dare say would be just as good in a casserole as anything else. Again, let's have a quick think about sausage making in general. Is it going to replace sausage making? No, it's not. But it is a different world to sausage making, a different arm to sausage making. For that reason, I'm trying to get a good supply of these uh, that will be inexpensive enough to match with a book. Um, because one of the things that the sausage making world hasn't got is a really good resource of sausage making, skinless sausage making. So I think possibly there's a kind of a, 
a definite need there. So if you might be interested in such a thing, then please do leave a comment and uh, I'd, I'd love to hear uh, from you anyway. If you make skinless sausages on a regular basis, then please, please do get in touch. We'd love to hear your recipes. Well, thanks ever so much for listening. And next week we'll be back probably with some skins. Bangers and mash, minestrone. Bangers and mash, macaroni. Give us a bash at the bangers and mash, me mother used to make.
bang us a mash. Minestrone. Bang us a mash. Macaroni. Give us a bash at the bang us a mash. Me mother used to make. 